Our story starts in the mid-2000s in Moscow, Russia. Vladimir Putin is well into one of his many long reigns as the Russian leader. Now Vlad is many things, most of them terrible, but one thing he loved the most was football. And Zenit St. Petersburg was his team. And Putin was sick to death of Russian football, the national team especially being crap. And in true Vlad's style, he had cooked up an evil plan to cheat and help Russia rise to the top of world football. Now instead of building a new training facility for his nation and doing things the right way, Vlad had other ideas. He called in his chief scientist, Roman Ivanov, and told him about his new idea. The Russian Secret Service had illegally required, i.e. stolen, the DNA of Vlad's three favourite footballers, Avil Nedved, Gabriel Batistuta and David Beckham. He told Roman that he had to figure out a way to combine all three players' DNA so that they could create their very own super player. Roman Ivanov knew they had to be successful or his life and his family's well-being would be in danger. So after months and months of rigorous testing and endless days working in his lab, Roman finally cracked it. All they needed now was a surrogate mother. So Putin blackmailed one of the country's recent gold medal winning Olympic champions and super athletes, Anya Sokolov, by kidnapping her mother and telling her that the only way she would see her again would be if she went along with his super baby plan. Now the initial idea was to make one wonder kid player. To Vlad's delight, the embryo had split into three. And nine months later, Anya gave birth to triplets, meaning Vlad's plan now changed and he dreamed of creating the best forward line in the history of football. As soon as the babies, Sergei, Dmitri and Victor were born, they were taken away from their mother. Anya was instantly removed from the science facility and mother and sons would never see each other ever again. The three brothers would be given the head scientist's Roman surname, Ivanov, and they would be brought up in a cold, scientific, unloving and hard-working environment where every second of their life was monitored. Each day for the brothers would consist of football training, tactical training, workouts and a strict diet. They would also have to study. Every day was endless study, especially languages. They would be taught by some of the best minds in Russia and also brainwashed into believing that Mother Russia was the greatest and that the West was their evil enemy. After each hard, long day, the brothers would go back to their dorm room that had no windows, but the only people that would show them any affection was each other. Each night, the TV in their room would play highlights from some of the greatest front three player combos in football history. One trio stood out to the boys the most, and that was Manchester United's Rooney, Ronaldo and Tevez from 2008. They dreamed of being as great as they were. I fell in love with Manchester United. Maybe one day they could be Reds too, the boys would say to each other. One of the many people who was tasked with moulding these three young boys' minds was Mikhail Petrovich, a well-respected doctor who lectured at Moscow University. Despite being forced into this role by the Russian government and Putin, Mikhail was a free-thinking revolutionary who didn't believe in what was happening to the boys was right. So for years, he secretly taught them about the real world, about the difference in cultures and about how wrong their situation was and that maybe one day they could all escape from the clutches of Vlad's regime together. Unfortunately though for Mikhail, he was caught one day passing papers to the boys and was never seen again. The trouble for Putin and Russia was that the seed had already been planted in these young boys' minds. They already knew the truth and they had already started planning an escape one day. As the Ivanovs turned from young boys into young men, the chief scientist heading the program happily informed Vlad that he felt they were ready to be unleashed on the footballing world. Putin was over the moon and called a press conference telling the nation that Russia had developed at the Zenit Academy, which was a lie, the three best Wonder Kid footballers the world would ever see, and that they would all be signing lifelong contracts with Zenit St. Petersburg. Next, Vlad intended to showcase his three new Wonder Kids to the world, but Mr. Putin had one problem. Due to his dreams of world domination, all Russian teams have been banned from playing any kind of European and international football. A little thing like that though, could not stop this power crazy dictator. And with a few handshakes and backhand payments, he managed to persuade UEFA into allowing him to enter a team into the under 19s tournament in Malta. Now, the world would see the first glimpses of Russia's true future footballing power, the Ivanov triplets. And the Ivanov boys did not disappoint. They took the first two games by storm for Russia, helping their team to a 5 0 and a 7 0 win. And they caused a stir in the footballing world because nobody had seen this coming. Nobody had even heard of the Ivanovs before. 
to keep the boys safe and away from the real world where somebody could ask them too many questions, Vlad had put them into one of the finest hotels in Malta where they would be escorted to and from games and protected and watched by one of his trusty bodyguards. If the boys were not playing football, they would be in their room studying away from the world. But what Vlad didn't know was that this certain bodyguard liked his vodka a little too much. And one night before the third game, when he thought the boys were asleep, he decided to sneak downstairs to the hotel bar for quite a few drinks. Now this was the moment the Ivanov boys had been waiting for. You see, they were not asleep. They were packed up and ready to make a run for it. They made their way out of the hotel room window, down the drain pipe and jumped on the first bus to the docks. They knew they would have to move fast, but they had been planning this for weeks and in fact couldn't believe they had actually been able to do it. They sneaked on a ferry from Malta to Sicily and then hitchhiked their way to Rome. When they arrived in Rome, they went straight to the Finnish embassy to ask for help and claim asylum. The Finnish government were more than happy to help the boys and saw it as getting one over on Putin and Russia. They fast-tracked nationalising the boys and within a week they had Finnish passports. Putin was furious. He could not believe his favourite pet project they'd been planning for years had been taken away from him and he wanted revenge on the Ivanov boys for turning their backs on Mother Russia and him. He sent two of his secret servicemen to Finland to take care of the Ivanovs but they were apprehended at the airport by Finnish security and deported. And with Finland recently joining NATO, Vlad had no other option but to finally admit defeat for the, probably the first time in his life. Now the Ivanov boys were settled and had been placed with a family in Finland to look after their well-being. It was time for them to sign up with a club. So the Finnish FA had them sign up with legendary agent Lance Stryker, an agent who was trusted with looking after the boys' best interests. He wanted to give them the best start at a club. club that would keep them together and a club where they would be put in the shot window for a bigger move further down the line. So they signed a deal with HJK and would start playing straight away. Will the boys ever get their dream move to Manchester United? And can the Ivanov brothers help take Finland to the top of world football? Not only overtaking Russia, but by becoming the greatest front three combination the world has ever seen. Well, we will find out in the story of Forged in Deception. Hello, I'm Bood, and welcome to the channel as always. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you do all the good stuff. Smash the thumbs up, get involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell and you'll never miss anything I do like the return of my story series. I've got a few planned. Also, my good friend Greeno has a couple planned as well, which I'm very excited to share with you. Stories that he's written. One of them is a completely new concept, which is going to be quite hard to make. Completely different than the normal story format, but it could be quite cool if we can pull it off. So hopefully you're going to tune in for all them. But I am back after a week or so break, after the uh, Road to Anywhere and did my Journeyman Adventure series. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I really enjoyed it. It's quite sad that it's over, but it's school all day. So I spent some time with the kids, plus my car blew up. I had to sort that out and I've ended up having to buy a new car. But we're all good and we are ready to go. And this is the first story video of FM24. If you've never seen one of these, if you're new to my channel, there is a link in the description. I've been making them for years. I think they've got better over the years. Some are better than others, obviously. Quality's got better, as I've learned along the way. Um, and even though they're on older games, if you enjoy this, you might enjoy a lot of them because there's a lot of them. Some of, <laughs> some of them have been really enjoyable. But here we are with Forged in Deception, my first story of the year. You know the story. We don't have to go on about it. We're going to follow the careers of the three triplets, the Ivanov boys who are staying here in Finland because they're now Finnish. And I, I want to follow their careers, but I want to see if they can actually do something. Front three of glory. Great left winger, great right winger forward players and a striker um, can they change a country like Finland who I don't think has been to many international tournaments I don't think have they ever been to the World Cup I'm pretty sure they haven't you know so can they change the fortunes of a nation and have glorious careers so it's the usual wonder kids story but again I, don't, I want to see if they can change a nation's fortunes um, now they are triplets but you know I've got a friend who's got triplets and they're not all exactly the same so there are a few differences I want to be a little bit different maybe in weight and size um, but they're all big lads, um, developed in Mother Russia. Um, but yeah, they turned their back on that country. And we're going to start here with Dmitry Ivanov. He's 18 years old, of course, he's Finnish, and he's the left winger. Now, I've modelled these guys on a few players. I want him to have different attributes, hopefully. Don't always work out that way in the editor, um, but he should be a cracking left-sided player. Now then, I'm a Man United fan. It's my first um, video of the year. So I've put the Man United link into it. They don't want to play for C. They don't want to play for PSG, right? Because, let's be honest, we all play Football Manager. 
and the Wonder Kids always go to them teams, so they're never going to play for them, hopefully. And I didn't want them playing in certain countries like Spain and so on. I wanted to go to the Premier League. My story is the first one. That's what I'm doing. Um, but I've also made an agent for him, Lance Stryker, as you heard in the story. Now, Lance is going to be a good agent in this first one. He's going to look after the boys. They need looking after their best interests. He's going to want them to stay somewhere, get paid well, that kind of thing. He's not a mercenary or anything. He's not going to sh shop them out. They probably, hopefully, will have good, great careers with a great agent like him. Um, now, you can see I've added the brothers, Victor and Sergei, and they did learn languages. They know Chinese, English, Russian, and of course, they learned Finnish in about three seconds because they're very clever. Here we go with Sergei. He's the right winger. Um, you can see they've got different attributes, got a bit of pace. I think I've made one of them a good corner taker. The other one's a good free, free kick taker. And they've got a few different attributes here or there. But again, should be class. And just a quick look, it's exactly the same when it comes to their information. They are triplets. They've all got the same goals. You all want to play for Man United. That doesn't mean that will happen though, does it? Finally, we've got 18-year-old Victor, who has actually played for his country because I think the Finnish league starts early. So... The computer's giving him them caps. All these players had zero caps when I made them in the editor, but he's already got in there with six caps and four goals, already helping Finland. We'll see what happens with that though. Um, but fantastic striker. He's a bit taller than his brothers, I think. He's six foot four. Um, but yeah, I was well interested to see how this works out. Again, just a quick look. Information is exactly the same. I mean, I haven't scrolled down, but I've tried to avoid Spain, uh, Germany, and they definitely don't ever, ever want to go back to Russia. So of course, Russia don't have anything on the game because they are banned, aren't they? Clubs are banned from European football because of the atrocities they're committing in the Ukraine, of course. And that's why I wanted to get one over on them with football manager. Why not? Sorry if you're Russian. Um, so they haven't got a world ranking, so we can't really compare Finland to Russia um, in this little mini experiment, whatever you want to call it, the story. But I don't care about them. I care about Finland and how well they can do. Finland are ranked 46 in the world, and I'm pretty sure they might have been to a Euros. I'm not checked that, but I'm sure they've never been to a World Cup. Let me know in the comments. Um, but it's a place I would love to visit. One of my subscribers is from Finland, and I remember posting, we follow each other on Facebook, and I remember posting a picture outside my house once when it was snowing. It's pretty bad for Manchester and England. It was like that deep. And I'm like, it covered everywhere. Everything is shut down. No one could drive on the roads. And I'm like, wow, this is well bad. And I remember him sending me a picture like, uh, this is my house. And the snow was basically up to the top of his roof. I don't know how they do it, but they do. Um, but it's a place I'd love to visit one day. So yeah, I wanted to give them the best start. So they are starting at HJK, which is the best team in the country. Favourites to win the league. Probably helped maybe as well by having the three best young forward wonder kids, potentially in the world right now. Ivanov brothers, Victor, Dimitri and Sergei. Yeah, I think that's enough. I think we're getting stuck into this. Let's see how they get on. So we've jumped five years into the future and all three boys have in fact moved to England. But not all of them have got their dream move to Manchester United. But Sergei Ivanov did go to one United, Newcastle United, for a measly 2.4 million. Now I actually did put in 150 million pound minimum fee release clauses that didn't need to get matched. I mean, the values may be out great in Finland. But well, it's pretty cheap for a player of this quality. Now he's wanted five years into the future. By Manchester United, will he get that move? He's got 20 caps, five goals. He's definitely starting to flesh out a little bit more. Perfectionist elite winger who's played a ton for Newcastle. Now we'll have a look at things they win at the end. Um, but yeah, he made his move pretty quick, I think. He didn't even get through a season, which he was doing fantastic for HJK. Um, and now he's been at Newcastle for a good chunk of years and been an absolute baller. Look at last season. Wow. Next to make his move was Victor Ivanov. And Spurs paid £5.75 million for the big striker. Wasted absolutely no time in replacing Harry Kane, did they? Uh, again, he's fleshed out a little bit. He's a born leader, can use both feet, elite striker. He's got 60 goals in 98 games, apparently. Now, he too made his move pretty quick during that first season. I'm pretty sure of it. Played three more games than his other brother. Um, and then made his move to Spurs where he's been ever since. Last but not least, it's Dimitri Ivanov, who not only got his dream move to Manchester United, he stayed a little bit longer in Finland, but Man United got a bargain there, didn't they? Better than Anthony as a player and a price, 2.9 million. He's the left winger, but you know what I mean, he can cover on the right. A fantastic player, leader, elite winger, we know that. There's a ton of caps. 
for Finland. But yeah, he um, made his move later. As you can see, he completed a season, a fantastic season for HJK, who did win the league, very obvious really. Um, and then obviously got into the next season, but Man United made their move, 2.9 million. But it's been ever since. Finland's world ranking has actually dropped, which I was shocked by when I saw. I thought these three players coming to Rome, getting into the early 20s, are going to be starting to get real good qualities. Um, but they're not helping Finland just yet. I'll quickly go through it, um, but they failed to qualify for stuff. I think they got to a qualifier for the Euros, maybe, or something. I remember seeing that. Yeah, Euro Championship qualifier playoff got beat off Wales. So, you know, the Finnish dream might never happen. But like I said, we'll have a look at everything the boys accumulate at the end. See who comes out on top individually. Who can win the most trophies for the teams. If they stay at them teams, will Man United get the hands on all three of them? It cost an absolute arm and I'd like to do that now. They should have done it at the beginning. Um, but I'm pretty, I was happy. I wanted them to go to England. My first story, I wanted them in the Premier League and I'm, I'm happy really. At least one of them got to United and they're all at good clubs in the Premier League. Now then it's 2030 and the boys are all now 25 years old or a little bit better. Not at their peak yet, but all looking like fantastic players and all still at the clubs they moved to. Now it's 2030 and they've had a World Cup. Did they get to it? Well, these are the qualifiers for the World Cup. And yes, they topped that group with six wins, a loss and a draw. You see, they lost two as well. You know, fair play. Um, but they got to it. And this was brilliant. Because I'm not going to lie, I was a bit shocked just because of the, them first few years. Even when they're like 22, 23, they couldn't get to the Euros. They didn't get to the other World Cup. Uh, but they got to this one. And the lads had really started to, to peak and really did help them get through it. Beating Iran, Ivory Coast. I mean, dominating Group B. They beat South Korea in extra time. Beat Senegal. And then England who, you know, are always one of the best. I'm, I know I'm English, but they are overpowered on this game. We beat them 1-0 and unfortunately got beat by Spain in extra time in the World Cup semi-final. But they did face Ecuador um, and win in extra time. Chill out. Third in a World Cup. Have they peaked? Well, we're going to find out because we're now on the next World Cup. Well, the end of the next World Cup is 2034 and Sergei Ivanov is an absolute beast. He's now 29 years old. His brother is still at Spurs. I'm happy with that. He's 29 years old. Proper Spurs goal scoring legend. And Dimitri is still at Manchester United. They're loyal. I said I wanted him to have a good agent who looks after him, gets him a good deal, but you know, keeps him somewhere good. And they've all stayed pretty loyal. The loyal boys, they're showing that loyalty. And they came third in the last World Cup. What about this one? Well, we'll go on the international page here because look at their world ranking. They are now ninth in the world. And one thing I've noticed, and I don't know why, well, you know, Finland, the bang average, aren't they? As a footballing nation, you don't really see many top end Finnish footballers. But, I mean, I don't know if it's me, but like the region starts to look half decent. Some of them, he's not a region, of course, neither is he. But I'll try and maybe show some to you. But I just felt like the quality of the team got a bit better. Well, first off, they did play the Euros in the middle in 2032 and qualified for the Euros. We were a bit near and then got beat by Spain again. This time in the second round. But then in the World Cup qualifiers, they proper dominated. Only one team went up and it was definitely them. Undefeated, only drew one game against... When I saw this, if you know, you know. Greeno, everyone knows who Greeno is by now on my channel. If you don't, he's a good friend of mine. He's very helpful to the channel, played a million characters. Um, his family from Gibraltar, he loves Gibraltar, he'll love that. Um, but yeah, dominated the rest of it. 5-0 in the other one. And yeah, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Look at that. Group F. Brilliant. Brilliant in Group F. Look at that. Ivanov's all over the shop. Nigeria in the second round. Then they've got Australia, who I think were hosting it. I think they were the host of the World Cup. Uh, England again. And battered England. He got sacked for that, the manager. No, I remember seeing that. And then this time it was Italy. Who pipped him to the post in extra time. But then they went on and just won the third place playoff. So that's back to back World Cup. So they come third. But now we're going to jump forward two years. Because these Euros were pretty epic. I mean, they have definitely improved Finland as a nation. They're now 31 years old. And they do say a footballer, especially this kind of player, might peak between 27, 32, your best years. So they're still in the prime and they still look very good. And Victor, just like his other brother, is still at the club he signed from after HJK. But what about Dimitri? Of course he's still at Man U. 
Man United. He ain't gonna leave. So he has to leave. Um, but yeah, the Euros. Well, they only kind of just got through. Um, the boys getting a bit older. And just lost a little, a bit. Sweden actually topped that group, but they qualified. And that was all that mattered because they only went on and won it. They won it. And I'll be honest with you, I was focusing on World Cups. I nearly missed this. Luckily, I, I have it saving around this time every year. Um, and I had a backup file. And when I noticed it, I went, shit, no way, didn't nearly miss that. I thought they'd have peaked. But luckily, I've been able to go back and see and show you in real time in 2036 that they won the Euros. They beat Turkey, then they were beat off the Netherlands, beat Bosnia. Uh, England again. They love England in tournaments, don't they? Uh, look at the France game in the quarters. On the Ivanovs. They finally, finally got one on, up on the old nemesis. Spain has knocked them out of other tournaments. Uh, in the semi-finals where they faced Belgium and won on bloody penalties. I mean, Viktor Ivanov, he's the striker. He missed. But anyway, who cares? They, they won the piss in Euros. It's now 2039 and the triplets are 34 years old. And Serge is still at Newcastle. True legend for the Geordies. Um, now, the finished careers are coming towards the end. Some of them, I think some of them have retired. The Finland story's over, but I think that's brilliant because you never know what's going to happen in stuff like this. I think two third place World Cups and winning a major tournament for Finland, the freaking Euros, is amazing. You know, they come towards the end of their career, but we all know with FM24, things have changed because of a certain nation who will start to get involved very soon. But not for Sergei and not for Dimitri just yet. They're still at their clubs. But what about Victor? Nope, Victor is the first to go. Viktor Ivanov has made a move to Al Ali. I'm rubbish with these ones. They all sound the same to me, the Al teams in Saudi Arabia. But there he is. He's got out there 1.5 million pound a week. And he only played one season there. He did very well, 28 goals in 34 games. And he retired at 35. He just retired. Now you can see there a lot of his achievements. We will look at it at the end. But what about his brothers? Are they going to retire? What are they up to? Serge is in fact still at Newcastle. 35. But he's wanted by Al Nazar. Is that the team Ronaldo plays for? I think it is. I might be wrong. But look at that, eh? Still a top player, isn't he? And Dimitri at 35 is still going. Still going and still at Manchester United. OP it's 500 games. Well, if we jump forward quite a few years, it's now 2042. You'll see that Dimitri stayed loyal to Man United. He never made a move to Saudi. He stayed there for as long as possible and retired at 37. An absolutely insane career. Nearly 20 years at Man U. Absolute madness. And I mean, he stacks up some trophies for the Reds, innit? But what about his brother, Sergei? Well, he's still going. Victor retired years ago. Dimitri's just retired. But Sergei has decided not to retire. He's made his move, finally, to Saudi Arabia to Al-Hilal, or whatever they call bloody hell. They're, so, they're all the same, aren't they? They sound very similar, don't they? I mean, it's mega money. It's not as much as Victor got out there. 1.5 million pound a week, but 900 grand at 37. A lovely little retirement fund. Here we are, another two years later, 2044. Sergei Ivanov didn't retire to his 39. He went out there and played two seasons in Saudi Arabia. Two seasons. I mean, absolute madness. So he played for three clubs. Now then, to try and go through everything they won, and I know we've seen all these screens, but we're going to go on here and his brothers, um, I'll scroll it down. Feel free to pause it, because to go through it would be insane. Now, what's if they've made icon lists, which we assume they have, and they have. Um, but Serge, despite a bill of gazillion, trillion, million, dillions, bricking Ballon doors, only made it on the icon list. Not putting up there with Alan freaking Shearer and Kevin bloody Keegan. Victor, though, despite never winning the Ballon d'Or, I don't think he did. I probably missed it. I've done that many times when I've said, oh, they didn't do that. And I get it in the comments. Yeah, yeah they did. Um, he made the Legends list for Spurs. Check that out. I mean, he was a beast, wasn't he? 
And Dimitri, he's up there with Gigsy and Fergie. They got it for Sergei. He definitely should have made the Legends list. How has that not happened? How does it work that out? Surely he would have. I mean, maybe it's because he never really helped Spurs become a true force, but it's that his fault. I mean, Newcastle have won plenty of titles, but they've got a bit of money. United have won more titles than I've ever seen them winning anything. Um, because we're usually pretty average these days on the game, even when you jump into the future. Um, well, that's the Premier League. And this is the Champions League. Um, again, you, I'm, I'm hoping you've paused it. If, you, if you're really interested, you'll be able to see what they've won. Um, but I just thought we'd look at the Premier League and the Champions League, because that's the two big ones, isn't it? United have won quite a few. Newcastle got in there. I suppose so. Oh, yeah, sorry. Newcastle Spurs final. Oh, I missed that. Newcastle Spurs. 2030. Brother versus brother. Awesome. Did they, look at that. 2039 is my favourite year. United City. <laughs> oh, love it. Brilliant. I love that. I love how Roma's won it recently. What about Finland though? Well, after reaching the heights of a top 10 nation, winning the Euros, becoming a World Cup third place team, two times on the bounce, and they've dropped back a little bit. Not as low as the 59th, I think they dropped to. Third place. I'm happy with that because it doesn't always work out that way. They definitely improved Finland. The greatest front three of all time. I mean, there'd be arguments. Is it Tevez, Rooney, Ronaldo? A lot of you probably say no, but I'm biased. Um, that's just me. <laughs> I hate Tevez, by the way. Don't like him. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. This is just a first story. It is just a bit funny if you've never seen one. We have a bit of a story and we follow the lads' careers. I'm open to a few different ones, different kinds of players, different kinds of personalities, different kinds of situations. Keep your eye out for both of Greenos. Um, one's called The Gang of New York, based in America, which is gotta be epic, I think. But it's um, another one he's done called A Mad, which looks insane. So yeah, keep your eye out for them. I've got a few coming as well. Um, so thank you, as always. Hit the thumbs up, get involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new, and hit that bell, and you'll never miss anything to do. But most of all, thank you for your view. Appreciate you, man. Make sure you go and catch up with some old stories, rewatch a few, they are fun. You can't see my road to anywhere. Go well, check it out. Forget the older series. Watch the first episode. It's a catch up. I just appreciate you sitting here with me right now and I hope you're happy. I hope you're safe. And I hope to see you again. So don't go missing. I'm booed. Bye bye.